Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another third party unlicensed figure unboxing and review video. Now today we're going to be taking a look at none other than the White Hero based off the classic mighty superhero line from Ace Toys. Now if you've caught all of my previous videos you'll know that I'm absolutely loving the work that Ace Toys are putting out here. But before we begin I want to let you know this is a third party unlicensed product. That doesn't mean this is a counterfeit item. It absolutely absolutely isn't. It's just a third party item that doesn't have any of the branding because of course this is technically the White Ranger from the classic TV series Mighty Morphin Power Rangers but they haven't put any of that on the box because they don't have the intellectual property rights to call this guy the White Ranger. But then again we all know who technically this is supposed to be. Now if you do want to pick this up I purchased my personal copy from ToysWonderland.com. I have put the link in the description below just for your reference purposes only. This is not a promotional video by any means. This is a review of a product that I purchased with my own money. Now with all of that being out of the way now, I want to let you know that this is a line that hopefully Ace Toys will be continuing. They've already shown us a couple of picks, a couple of renders if you will, of a Lord Dracon and also their gold Zeo Ranger. So potentially that does mean we'll be seeing some Zeo Rangers sometime in the near future. And yes, as soon as that Dracon is out, I will be doing a review on him because I can cannot wait. Been reading the Boom Studios comics and loving them so far. Nevertheless, what we're gonna do now is get the box laying flat in the light box and do the unboxing. And here of course we have the box art for the White Hero. As you can see, pretty much identical to what we got with all of the previous other ranges. If you haven't already, go ahead and check out those reviews. I've absolutely loved this series so far. Now of course you can see I've decided to use the dark background throughout the course of this video because of course it's a White Ranger, you wouldn't otherwise be able to see him. Hopefully Hopefully nobody minds that we've switched it up just a little bit. Now as you can see White Hero on the front there and Superhero Series A, I do believe that means that they are planning to do hopefully a full collection of Rangers, fingers crossed I would love to see that. And of course even though on the suit you don't have the diamonds, it's representative of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers so they pop them on the front and around the side. And that does mean if you want to stack up all of the boxes they will all be nice and uniform so that is definitely a plus. Now this guy hasn't been out for very long so I do have the privilege of taking an early look at him and here he is. He looks absolutely awesome. I cannot wait to pose him up alongside the rest of the rangers in the team. Now taking off the plastic on his head, I have to say this piece looks absolutely awesome but I do have a few comments and we'll get to that a little bit later in the video. Now let's take a look at the rest of the stuff in the box. As you can see, a couple of hands and also Saba. So what we're going to do now is get all of this stuff laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. And here we have all of the accessories that come with the Ace Toys White Hero. Now as you can see it's kind of slim pickings and to this day I do still think that it's a missed opportunity to not include a display base like this one right here. This one doesn't come with the figure. I actually picked it up on eBay in a set with all of the other Rangers display bases and I have to say this thing if it had been included would have absolutely set this entire thing off. It's beautiful. It looks awesome. I will pop the link in the description below if these are still available to the eBay listing where I picked this up because as I said I think this sets the whole thing off and is an absolute must. I don't know why they didn't include it but then again these ranges are relatively cost effective so maybe to keep the costs down a little bit because there's a hell of a lot of new molding and sculpting going on they decided not to do it but for whatever reason it was I'm sure there was one. This though is definitely a must in my opinion. Now let's take a look at the only real big accessory that he does come with being of course Saba and I have to say this thing is straight up beautiful. They've done a really nice job not only with the sculpting but also in the washers. In the show it wasn't 100% pristine. In fact the entire suit wasn't and I think they nailed it throughout. You can see washes, you can see detailing here. It just looks stunning and even on the Saba head you can see his little eyes are nicely painted out in some red. I think this thing looks beautiful and is a huge plus and a big reason to pick up this guy over the other one six scale custom ranges out there which don't pay as much attention to the weapons. Don't get me wrong they are great for back in the day but I have to say this 
is stunning. Now for the hand, you do only get a few, but you do get one new one. They kind of have a bit of a hand share going on and they mostly come with exactly these ones that you can see right here. This one though doesn't come with a wrist peg, whereas all of the other ones do come with their own. That is a huge plus. If one breaks, you definitely do have a lot of spares, but the only other complaint that I really do have is we only get one of these sort of T-Rex style hands. I kind of would have liked at least with the Red Ranger and maybe they could have packed it in here to sort of make up for it. Two of these so you can do his iconic pose, but nevertheless, we only get one. But at the very least, they are sculpted to look like Ranger gloves. They are painted and weathered very, very nicely. They do look very realistic and I love it. Now that's pretty much it for the accessories. What we're gonna do now is get the White Ranger himself out here and take a closer look. And here we have the White Ranger himself standing straight up and down the light box. No crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. And I have to say, right off the bat, I honestly think Ace Toys have nailed it. They've done a really, really good job here. For being a third-party unlicensed product, you can tell they love the brand. They really do. From all of the other Ranger figures to now, having this White Ranger in hand, they've actually made improvements. Something that they really didn't need to do. If they didn't care, they could have thrown him in a box. No problem. There you go. There are your Rangers, sir and madam. But no, they haven't done that. They've tightened the joints. They've made a few changes since I saw this guy originally. And I really do like the end result. Yes, there are still a couple of inaccuracies depending on whether you're looking at the American or the Japanese footage and some things don't necessarily line up but literally take a step back look at this guy on the screen and tell me this doesn't scream the White Ranger because in person it has a presence as it should because of course the White Ranger is the epitome of all things good and this guy right here does a really good job of capturing that essence in figure format. Having this guy along with the rest of the team is honestly one of my favorite lines in all things 1-6 scale. I cannot wait to get even more Power Rangers related items from Ace Toys. Either way, what we're gonna do now is take him off the turntable, punch in, and take a closer look at the details. And here we have the White Ranger himself up close and personal. And I have to say, this thing, at first glance, looks absolutely stunning. I am really impressed with the detail throughout this entire piece. There were a couple of inaccuracies with the other Rangers, and don't get me wrong, there are probably some here as well, but this one, I think, definitely does a lot better of a job looking pretty much as close as possible to both the American and Sentai footage, and I really like the way they've done it. The only real sort of nitpick that I do have is potentially the shape of the helmet. As you can see, the top is a little bit wider and it goes very, very slim towards the bottom. I do actually have a picture of the screen use suit just off screen on my computer there and it's a little bit inaccurate, but then again, from some angles, it looks beautiful. At the very least, it's painted really, really nicely. That gold has a very nice pop, so does the silver, and the deep black on the visor is really nice and glossy. The entire thing, in fact, has a sheen to it. You can see throughout the entire helmet, even the white has a nice gloss. So in my opinion, they've definitely made some improvements, but I'll touch on this again a little bit later. The helmet itself is a rather heavy piece, and that's because it's pretty much a solid chunk of plastic. So when you are moving him around, you can see that the neck joint, as stiff and as sturdy as it is, you can see when you place it in a pose, it'll stay there. But unfortunately, the helmet being a little bit heavier will pull it back every now and then. So make sure you do your pose, then pop it in the display without knocking it around too much, and then you'll be totally fine. But overall, I think the helmet is maybe an 8 out of 10. I definitely think there could have been some improvements, but for me personally, I really like the way it looks. Now for the shield itself, I also really like this. A couple of people had an issue with the dragon shield on the green ranger i think this one will definitely ruffle a lot less feathers they painted it nicely it's pretty much the right shape and there is weathering throughout the entire thing you can see a couple of washes especially in the symbol there in the show it wasn't a hundred percent pristine and i do like the fact that they've carried that across to this ranger figure itself it looks pretty much as screen accurate as i think any company has gotten in one six scale so far not to say it's a hundred percent flawless but again to me i really like the way it looks They've even got the fact that the upper part here is a sleeve over the top of the undersuit with the gold band there. It looks really, really good. It also has a subtle sheen throughout the entire thing, just like the suits had on screen. And I think they definitely nailed it. Even the figure arts figure had that subtle pearlescent effect. This kind of does recreate that, and I think it lends a lot to how this suit looked 
in the show. The actual gauntlet pieces themselves are sculpted to only go one way, but you can sort of swivel them around just if you want to have the wrists in certain different directions. They are relatively seamless when you pull them down, but you can see a gap. But then again, on the actual suit, they were gauntlets as far as I could tell that go over the top, so this works perfectly fine for me. And at the very least, the gold between most of these pieces does actually match, including Saba, whereas when you get the armbands and the helmet, it's slightly different. But again, for me, as a whole, when I look at this, it screams White Ranger, it screams badass, because that's exactly what Tommy was, and I love the way it looks. Panning the camera down to give you a closer look at the rest of the outfit on White Ranger. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward in its design. Just the white spandex and of course the boot coverings. At the very least, Ace Toys have done the right thing here and given us a split cut boot design. That means that you can pretty much move the top up, then get the optimal ankle range of motion. Yes, there will be some gapping, but that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make to get these guys and gals into some really awesome poses because of course the Power Rangers were no for doing those dynamic poses. Now, there is one kind of, not even complaint, just thing that I've noticed, and it's the fact that the padding around the joints are rather visible. It's a bit of a trade-off. If you didn't have this here, this sort of padding piece, then you would see the construction of the joint itself it would look really thin and garish there. So I do appreciate the fact that they've gone ahead and filled that in. But then again, at the same time, it also is really apparent. So you'll have to make up your own mind and let me know down in the comments if that does bother you. Now, the belt itself is really nice and accurate to the show, and you can see that Saba can be holstered. Now, the way that you do it is it's actually Velcroed on the side there, so you can remove Saba, and you can see the little holster piece is just a piece of Velcro, and it is nice and thin, which again, I do believe is accurate to the show without being an overly bulky plastic piece and having to force Saba in there and ruin the paint job. I think this is the best attachment method that they could come up with, and it really does work. Now, there is a stark difference between the color and shade and even texture of this piece compared to the belt itself. Does that bother me? Not really. I think it works perfectly fine. It gets out of the way. It's not even all that visible, especially from the front. So to me, that doesn't bother me all that much. But I know there are Sentai and Power Ranger fans out there who might not like that. Do let me know how accurate or inaccurate this entire belt setup is down in the comments below. Now for a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have the White Ranger compared to his former more evil than turned good self being the Green Ranger. And I have to say, my favorite Ranger of all time is still the Green Ranger, but the White Ranger comes in a very close second. Tommy, total badass, and I'm so glad now to have both representations on the shelf. I also have to say that I've clearly noticed a difference in the quality of the joints on my White Ranger compared to the green one, which was from the first wave. So maybe Ace Toys have made a few improvements because I actually really do struggle to stand the rest of my Rangers, whereas this guy, the White Ranger, is perfectly fine. Now you can see they're pretty much exactly the same height. I do believe the bodies underneath the underlying structure is identical. You can see a tiny bit more height on the White Ranger, and I do think that's due to the construction of the helmet, the body underneath, you can see from the actual neck down, remains pretty much exactly the same. Obviously, the outfits are completely different, as they should be. Which one do I prefer in figure format out of these two? I have to say, the White Ranger for me takes the cake. He looks so damn good, literally just standing there. The Green Ranger has a few more inaccuracies from the helmet to the dragon shield shape, and it kind of throws me off a bit, but that's not to say it's a bad figure. It still is beautiful, and I really do like it, but for me personally, the White Ranger definitely is my favorite. Now, for those of you out there who might not be all that familiar with 1-6 scale items, I wanted to give you a quick Power Rangers collectible comparison. And as you can see, standing next to the Legacy White Tiger Zord, this White Ranger is a big boy, so hopefully that gives you a rough idea as to the size. If you only collect Power Rangers stuff and you're thinking about getting into 1-6 scale specifically with this line, this hopefully will give you a rough idea of how these two items scale standing together. And now, of course, the moment I'm sure you've all been waiting for here is the entire team, complete with their custom display bases, standing there alongside, all posed up with the White Ranger. And I have to say, this is just straight up a sight to behold. How good 
does this look? It literally screams 90s and Power Rangers and I love it. I'm so very glad that I took the plunge when Ace Toys went at a completely unknown company and decided to go ahead and go out on a limb and pick up these figures because now having them in hand, this is quintessential Power Rangers in 1-6 scale in my opinion. And yes, I know it's unlicensed and it is third party, but I do think that it's the best we're going to get at least for a while. Maybe an official company will eventually wake up, smell the roses and decide to pick up this license. I don't know why it hasn't been done. As you can see, it clearly can be and to a really high standard. These guys and gals look fantastic standing together and I do think that's how you have to have them. Yes, I know a lot of people do have their favorite ranges, maybe just white or green, but having the whole set is a real feast for the eyes and I love it. Don't worry, you will be seeing all of these guys and gals posed up alongside one another in the upcoming collection tour. Just going over articulation on the White Ranger himself. Now bear in mind this is my personal copy of the figure so I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. When you get yours in hand I'm sure you can push the joints a little bit further than I'm willing to go. Either way let's start off with the head sculpt itself. It is on a ball joint at the top part of the head and also at the lower part of the neck so you pretty much get the full range of motion. It is a little bit heavy due to the obvious size of the helmet so when you do have it in a pose try not to knock it around otherwise it may fall out of place but nevertheless it definitely can get the full range of motion. Now the arms themselves go pretty much up unrestricted. It is a spandex style suit so it is rather stretchy. Going forward you will be limited by the shield but then again it would be in real life as well. You can go out and then move it forward a little bit more and the shield does float around a little bit but that's not to say that you can move it straight up out of the way and get more articulation. Now you do have a butterfly joint up there at the shoulder. You also have a swivel at the bicep, a double bend at the elbow. All of the joints are rather stiff so you will have to work them in a little bit but I'd rather them be that way other than completely floppy and unusable so that is definitely a plus. Then of course down at the wrist you do have a regular 1-6 scale wrist joint. Now the waist itself or in fact the entire torso you think would be restricted due to the shield but no going back you do get a surprising amount. Going forward a little bit less you do have a swivel and of course pivot side to side. The legs themselves pretty much unrestricted all the way forward. Same thing without swivel at the upper thigh, a double bend at the knee, and of course down at the feet, a regular 1-6 scale ankle peg. Just wrapping up on the Ace Toys White Hero. Now bear in mind this is a third party item, like I said right at the start of this video, and it is unlicensed, but in saying all of that, I know this video has been a bit of a gush fest because let's be honest, there isn't all that much to hate about this figure right here. I know there are slight inaccuracies from Power Rangers and also from the Super Sentai footage, so I'm really curious, let me know down in the comments below what they got right and what they got wrong, because as I said, I'm genuinely interested in knowing how accurate this piece is, but for me personally, being less of a hardcore Power Rangers fan, I love it. It screams White Ranger, it complements the rest of the team perfectly, and now Finally, I have the complete set. This honestly was one of my best decisions in collecting 1-6 scale. It's a line that I really didn't know that I had to have until now. And as I said, I'm so very glad that I went ahead and picked this up. It is now potentially one of my all-time favorite lines in 1-6 scale. There's so much meaning behind Power Rangers. As a kid, we'd all watch the show and now having them fully realized in this format is a dream come true. It's my childhood literally standing there right in front of me and I love it. I can't get enough of this line. Fingers crossed they go all out. I want Zeo. I want In Space. I want Turbo even. Keep going Ace Toys. I know all of you guys and gals can do it and I think you're going to impress each and every collector. Hell, why not even do the Boom Studios figures? I'd love to see a 1-6 scale Ranger Slayer. That would be fantastic and of course a 1995 movie suit line of figures that would blow my mind but fingers crossed the real way to hopefully get these made is for us to support the company and I know it is third party and this is not by any means a promotional video it's just a review of a product that I purchased with my own money but all of that being said I love it and I cannot wait to see what's next. Now if you do want to pick up this Ranger or any of the other Rangers I bought mine from ToysWonderland.com again that's it's not promotion, it's just a review of something that I picked up and I picked it up from Toys Wonderland. Link is down below just for your reference purposes only. Now with all of that being said,
and if you do like seeing really early third party and Hot Toys content, why not hit that subscribe and notification bell so you're notified as soon as brand new content goes live on the channel. Also, while you're down in the description, why not check out the link to Six Scale Network, the brand new awesome Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.